Hi there, my name is Kale Boss, hmm? the only boss with one S. Happy new month to all of you. Welcome to a month of new possibilities. Why life has been made so easy? It's because of Tap Tap Send. People, Tap Tap Send is here to make your life easy if you want to transfer money to Ghana, if you want to transfer from USA, if you want to transfer from UK, Europe, Canada, a lot of places all to Ghana. And guess what? When it comes to Ghana, there's no e levy charge. So, what are you waiting for? Download Tap Tap Send on Google Play Store and App Store and be ready for a sight of us coming your way each time, every time on Tap Tap Send. Tap Tap Send. Send more, spend less. Okay, guys, I welcome you live on SBTV Africa. My name is DJ Nyame. Uh, if you just chance on our channel, this is SBTV Africa, the voice of the community. Make sure we have a lot of content, a lot of videos. Make sure you tap on subscribe, like our videos, share to your friends on WhatsApp and Facebook, invite them to come and join us, SBTV Africa. And this program, this segment is called Daily Hustle Worldwide. All you need is the internet. So wherever you are in the diaspora, you can come on board. Just WhatsApp me, send me a voice note. My show is open to all, uh, whether you are Ghanaian, you are African, wherever you are. So far as you can speak English. Me, I can't speak bonsoir, bonsoir, saba, saba. I can't speak Hausa, but I can try my technical English. So if you want to come on, come, let's vibe straight. Anyway, uh, my name is DJ Nyami. Today, my flight number DHW 1642 Concord Play. I'm going straight to Belgium. I have one beautiful lady from Cameroon. Yeah, Cameroon. Today, we are going to speak French small. My two by four French. I <laughs> want beautiful lady with me from Cameroon. She's based in Belgium. Sweet, I welcome you live on SBTV. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. Nice one, nice one. How is Belgium? It's okay. <laughs> Belgium is okay, eh? Yeah. You are making more euros, eh? Euro, euro. If you say so, okay. <laughs> but you are making it. If you are not making it, then say no. We are making it. I like that. I like that. What's your name? Flavin. Flavin. Flavin what? Flavin Tabe. Flavin Tabe. What's the meaning of Flavin? I don't really know, but it's a French name. I don't really know. Mm. What about Tabe? It's uh, my traditional Oh, Flavin Tabe. Nice one. Um, which part of Cameroon are you from? I'm originally from the southwest region of Cameroon. That's the English-speaking part of Cameroon. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, um, I'll come back to Cameroon. How long have you been in uh, Belgium? I've been here for like two years. Oh, two years. You are new. You are fresh burger. <laughs> you know I say fresh burger? You are new. I mean, two years. Okay. So are you schooling there or you are doing what? You're working? I'm a student. You're a student. Oh, great. Yeah. We'll get to know more. Let's come back to Cameroon. I mean, two years ago, back in Cameroon, what were you doing? Um, in Cameroon, so I graduated with um, a degree in communication. That's journalism and mass communication. Mm. Okay. Like every other country, you graduate and, you know, things are not moving the way that you expect. And some of the jobs that you get offered to or with are like, hmm, these ones can't really pay my bills because obviously when you graduate from the university, you are technically an adult and you feel like it's time for me to also do something to help myself so that i'm not a burden to my parents or people around me so um i didn't really get jobs and even if the ones that i saw were paying me like little little like that money can't even suffice for my transportation for the month so the young graduate uh, frustration i went online i'm like how to make money online and <laughs> i saw youtube and they said you can make money on youtube so yeah with the fact that i could communicate effectively i did journalism and mass communication so talking in front of the camera won't be an issue for me so that was how i started my first youtube channel it's not really it's okay. not a channel that i'm known for now but it was basically on skincare because i suffer from some skincare issues so i was just sharing my knowledge with other 
girls that were suffering with their own acne issues. And yeah, that was how I was getting paid by Google. And I was making my money as a young graduate while living wow. in Wow. Wow, Zwar that's fantastic. So that means you, you were using the internet wisely. Yeah. And it was giving you money. Yeah. So okay. now everything is online, right? But people too are online. Some people too don't know. They are just using the phone and be scrolling and be watching things. They are not and, making anything. From talking about skincare, I think I built a good community. And then I started selling skincare products. So people watch me on YouTube. They trust me. And I think I was selling the black soap, the African black soap and other products so yeah people were buying from all over the world they see me on youtube we had people from america europe that were buying my products and so yeah that was how i was able to gather my money and travel abroad <laughs> oh so you got your money from uh, uh adsense like youtube and all that before yeah. you travel you use that money to travel yes and then i think i was processing snails i don't know if you guys know snails in ghana oh wait, snails. We have snails here we have plenty Everything yeah. that you have in you have in Cameroon, we have some here because it's an African okay. country now. You can't transport fresh snails. So basically, I will buy snails like from farmers and then we process them. We take it out of the shell, we wash it, we dry it, and then I'll package it and I'll advertise online. So Facebook, Instagram, I'll advertise even on my YouTube channel, and then Africans that you know eat snails will contact me and then I'll send them abroad. So that was, that oh, was you are a businesswoman. So back uh, two years ago, you were doing this in uh, uh, um, Cameroon, and you were you, like everything was fine, right? You were moving um, cool. You were making money. Everything was okay, but then for somebody like me who is really ambitious, I felt like mm, this isn't. I don't want to be making this petty petty money. I want to, you know. And also, I wanted to see other places. My whole life, I've been in Cameroon. I've never gone out of Cameroon. And I wanted to do my master's as well. You know, I was just like, okay, maybe this money that I've gathered, let, maybe, maybe, let's just go abroad and see if there are better opportunities. If maybe, the, the goal is to come here and work and go back home. <laughs> maybe you can come here, work, gather more money, and all these yeah. ideas that you have in your head, you can go back home and... You know, maybe fix it. Mind you, it's not as if this place is like the best place. It's better than Cameroon. Anyway, it's better. Let's go that it's better than Cameroon in its own ways. But the goal is to come and go to school, maybe work and gather money, and then go back home. You speak English, so why did you choose to go to Belgium? Because Belgium don't speak. English. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Here we speak um Dutch, which is our official language, French, and German. And I come from Cameroon, so French is not so strange to me. But then okay. it, there were English taught programs here in Belgium. And the fact that you need to do your research when you're going to places. There was no way I was going to study in a place like the UK, the US, Canada. I don't have that kind of money to pay for school fees. <laughs> and then you check all the restrictions. You see schools in the UK like 12,000 pounds. Like I come from a, little, a very small background and I have an independent mindset. At my age, I didn't think that I wanted to stress anybody or stress my parents. So if I'm going abroad, I need to make sure that it's a place where I can pay my fees by myself, do everything by myself, that I don't need to call home. Please, so you people should send me money or something like that. So Belgium is quite, quite good for students, especially if you are alone. So my fees was like 4000 which is still very expensive. Because there are people here paying fees for fees, um, fees for 900 euros. So my fees was still expensive as compared to every other person. So yeah, mm. that, and the fact that they are very lenient with students working. You know, you go to some countries and they are like, you cannot work more than this number of hours. You cannot work here. You cannot. Yes, They have, we have uh, uh, 20 hours. You cannot work more yeah. than 20 hours. Yes, we do have the rule too that you cannot work more than 20 hours, but that does not mean that if you work more than 20 hours, you are in problem or it's illegal. It's not illegal. Basically, we have a particular number of hours that you're supposed to work as a student, and we don't pay tax in Belgium. Students don't pay tax in Belgium. So mm. if you work this year, the hours have gone up. Last year was like 470 something hours in a year. I think this year is like 600 and something hours. So if I'm working inside of that 600 and something hours, I don't pay tax. I'm exempted from paying tax. The only time that you see me paying tax is if I go out of that 600 and something hours, that's when I start paying mm. tax. So mm. this is 
so, um, some of the advantage advantages because if you go to a place like the US and all of that, you pay tax whether you are a student or not. You pay tax, so we don't pay tax here. And so, if I work more than twenty hours in a week, I don't get in trouble. It's not like one immigration officer is going to come behind me or something like that. They don't really care. The only thing is that they've given you six hundred hours to work in a year. Immediately you finish that six hundred hours, you turn into a working student. You start paying tax like every other person. Nobody. Let's, let, let, let's see this angle. How you went online looking for school and you chose um, uh, Belgium. How was the process like? I mean, I know oh. some people, they get scholarship and then all that. Why do you have to use your money to pay and all that? You couldn't, you couldn't get uh, somebody to sponsor you or something? Okay. The process is quite different for many countries, but I'm going to speak for Cameroon. And these are things that I also share on my channel because I feel like when I wanted to start my process, I went on YouTube. I didn't see a lot of people talking about Belgium. Belgium is like a non-existent country. You go online, you only see UK, Canada, and all of that. So basically the thing is that looking for schools is very simple. You just go on, you go to Google universities in Belgium. The names of the universities are going to pop up. You just scroll through, look at their programs, what you can do, what you cannot do. You look at the requirements. If you meet the requirements, okay, you try your luck and 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 um, apply for the schools. If you don't, if they don't take you. That's the worst that can happen. They did not take you. So that was. Mm. And this time around, I was doing. I didn't use any agent to do any of my processes. I'm so lucky that back then I had my boyfriend that was also helping me. So both of us did my application together. So he will, he will help, like if there's a fee that comes to us, he will help or help me and pay the fee. So it's basically going online, checking all the universities in Belgium, look at their programs, which one you meet the requirements. And then that's it, you apply. Most schools mm. don't trust students from Cameroon, Ghana, and Nigeria. We all know why, because in the past, some students were doing fraudulent activities. So yeah, that's it. So now when the school accepts you or they see that you meet the credentials that they've pasted online, so they will ask your school in Cameroon or Ghana or wherever to send your documents directly from the school. So if your school, I attended the University of Boya, so the University of Boya has to send my documents to my school here in Belgium. When you do that, okay, the school believes that actually you did graduate from that that university because people will bring fraudulent documents claiming that they graduated from a university when they didn't so when that is done when you we have um the school has accepted you sent your document the next thing is that they send you a mission letter and yeah voila that's it you start doing everything for the visa wow how much money do you need before you can you can take this course i mean uh, yours, you are not. You don't have any sponsor uh, sponsorship. You need to go flight ticket, where to stay, accommodation, okay. all those things. So the thing is that the thing is that for Belgium, we have three different means um, to have proof of service. So if you are lucky enough to get maybe a scholarship, it's good. It means that the school is going to be paying a certain amount of money monthly to keep you going. Um, another form is that you do a block account. So most schools will ask you to pay maybe. 12,000 euros or it depends on how much the school asks and then from that amount every every month they give you small money mm. out of their money mm. so if mm. you account for like 12,000 euros every month the school might give you like let's say 1,000 euros for your upkeep and all of that and then the mm. third option a lot of us students use is getting a guarantor or a sponsor somebody to stand in for you and say mm. that I'm going to share some liabilities with this student. I'll be in charge of their health care, their insurance. Maybe if they are deporting this child from this country, I'll be the one to pay for their flight back home and all of that. So I got mm. myself a sponsor, somebody that was willing to stand in for me. But of course, to be a sponsor, there are so many guidelines that are involved. Your sponsor has to be earning a certain amount of money. The, the sponsor needs to have a, a valid job that they earn monthly. So they have to present like their three last pay slips. They have to be maybe a permanent resident or a citizen of that country. This year, things have changed. You need to prove that you have a relationship with the sponsor. But the only good news is that if your sponsor is coming from Belgium or from any European Union member state, they don't have to show proof. But then if you want somebody like in the US, Canada, to stand in for you as a sponsor, you have to show proof that you are related to that person in some way. So I got myself a sponsor and yeah, 
I applied for my visa. So you're asking that how, how am I coping with pain? So lucky enough, my sponsor was kind enough to take me in when I just came to Belgium. So it's very important. Go to a place where you know, even if it's one person to take you in for like, even if it's one month so that you understand the system. So they took me in. I understood the system. I started working. And yeah, from there, I went and looked for my own student room. And I continued from there. So I work monthly. I pay my bills. I pay my fees. And I'm good. <laughs> wow. Accommodation. So are you, are you on campus or you've rented your own place? I'm renting out of my school because okay. I live in the city where my school is located. Mm. My, my school is located in the capital city, which is Brussels. But I know after living with my sponsor for like, anyway, the first one month, I used it to just examine Brussels. Brussels is a very hot town, like every um, capital city. It is filled with a lot of people, people from everywhere, and it makes job opportunities very hard to get in Brussels. And knowing fully where that I'm going to be paying my 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 rents, my school fees, I didn't want to go live in a place where I will not be able to get money. So I didn't live in Brussels, and the house rents in Brussels is like times two my own where I'm currently living. So I live in a city out of where my school is. I don't live in school, but then students can live in school. But then most times I don't even advise students to live in school, talking from personal experience because... Why? It's difficult to get jobs in Brussels. Student jobs. You will get jobs, but you will mostly be restaurant jobs, and they are a little bit strict with us. You cannot, you cannot be versatile. You cannot work different shifts and all of that. It's like it's rigid. And I, the number one goal with me is I'm a hustler. I can't go to a place where I'll not be able to work. That's mm. it. And most students who live in Brussels and live in school, they have their parents paying everything for them. You know where you're coming from. You cannot go and compare with those students. You, you don't have anybody. You'll be a hustler. I have anybody. Not that I don't have anybody. But I'm only no day house now. You'll be also on your own. Only no day. Yeah, I, I didn't even ask of your, your siblings. How many siblings do you have? Um, I have, I have four siblings. <laughs> four siblings. So yeah. your mom and your dad, mom and dad, are they still alive? Yeah, my mom is still alive. My dad is of late. Oh, sorry. Okay. You. <laughs> so you are you are you are now uh, taking the lead to hustle to give them something back home now enough i'm lucky that my parent my mother is not even in cameroon so i'm not so bothered about my mother this okay. this is basically maybe to reach out to any other family member but then personally my mom is not in cameroon so she's not much of a problem for me my sister why is your mom now she's in canada oh i see i see and my uh, sister okay. So it's not like I have so much. Oh, okay, I understand. I understand. You are a beautiful lady. So tell us something about the guys. What's up with the guys? I mean, you're walking around, the guys will come around. You say your boyfriend help you to feel something, something. Are you still with him or now? Still a yeah. new one? No, we are still together. So I'm not in a perfect place to talk about relationships in Belgium. I don't know much about those things. And I, I barely have time on my own hands. It's mostly school work and that's good time. but but I mean, some of the guys will stop you too and say oh beautiful lady they'll see you online beautiful lady oh you know i want to be your girlfriend and all that yeah they will but then i'm in a relationship so i'm not interested and most times it's hard to trust african men here in belgium because a lot of people come here to hustle some of them have their wives and children back home so uh. You have to be careful. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Someone told you or you have experienced it. I know that. I know. Are you a victim? If somebody approaches you and be like, I like you, it's simple. I'm in a relationship. I'm not interested. Right. But, that, but, yeah, you move on. That's it. Yeah. There's no time for long talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Nice one. So uh, what are you telling the youth, the young ones, people, a lot of people out there, they want to further their education and all that. Um, uh, but you know, you know the problem, most of we the Africans, we don't like to read, we don't like research, we don't want 
people who just want to do it for me yeah oh can you show me this can you show me that do it for me but we don't like to research on our own whereby there are so many opportunities online we can take our time and go through and all that but we like somebody should do for me somebody should help me somebody should do this without we really doing the research the thing is that what i'm going to say is that if you have plans of traveling abroad if you don't want to read or do research know that you're going to spend times two or times three the amount of money that you were initially supposed to spend because thank god i didn't use any agents i didn't spend a lot of money i spent money but then not a lot i spent just the necessary amount it's not like i was spending extra an amount to you know do this thing so it's very important that you do your research and if you have plans of studying in belgium the process is straightforward it's not even complicated go get a school get admission for people that are in cameroon the process is is pretty straightforward you just go get there's there, there are a list of documents that the embassy has for you though in cameroon is kind of different we have two organizations that we have to pass through before you get the visa meanwhile for people who are in ghana you guys don't have yeah. a very embassy so most of you i think you go to um which countries i think it's Cote d'Ivoire or it's abidjan something like that you go there to get your visa for ghanaians while for nigerians they get their visas directly from the belgian embassy but for us we just have to legalize our non-conviction it's a document that proves that you've not been involved in any any bad activities you don't have any criminal record and all of that once you legalize that document you put together all your other documents every document that you've had in life all your educational documents if you've worked before oh i even forgot to say that i did work before but then before i started every other thing that i started i did work somewhere so i had mm documents um i had my medical certificates now they are asking for health insurance to get your health insurance so you put together all these documents the first place that you go to is what we call via bell there you go and get your interview sessions so basically mm. the interview is in two phases the written and the orals so the written interview basically they're just asking you like what's the name of your school which course are you going to do is the course re the course that you did before and this course now are they related so for example somebody like me who did communication and now i want to come and do management why are you doing something different why don't why didn't you continue with what you did why are you choosing belgium why are you not going to germany us why belgium um with your sponsor or are you on sponsor uh, scholarship or are you using block accounts you know they just ask you all those questions how much is your sponsor earning all of those things what the address of your school what's the deadline of admission for your school and after mm. that you go and then have an or the oral interview with somebody basically they're just asking you the same questions again and then somebody's typing it on the computer after that you go to tls contact and then you drop all your documents there and pay a visa fee and you just sit and wait when you first got to belgium from africa you never traveled before when you got down from the airport <laughs> what, what came in mind it was cold <laughs> very cold <laughs> and then what after seeing the places and all that aside the weather what else after one month i'm like is this the europe is this what <laughs> is this the place <laughs> what's so special about this place it's not it's well, not because when you've never traveled abroad, you think that Africa is the worst place on earth. It's not. I tell you, there are places you enter here and you'll be like, yeah? Is this not a ghetto that I know from Cameroon? Like, it's not that special. It's a good place, yes, but there's nothing so special here. The but is it like, is it like, is it like um, those places, they don't show on their TVs, they don't show on their screens, but we show that, all those things on our screens for them to exactly, see and they think... Um, it, Ah, my, place is not nice and all that if i carry my camera and go to the train stations in the capital in brussels you see a lot of people sleeping on the streets there are homeless people sleeping on the street there are junkies people who are on drugs and all of that sleeping on the streets you will see them there's a lot of cold here people are out during the winter you see those people that, people that are poor here depending on the government it's just that as compared to africa they have systems in place they don't have corruption like us. Yes, to a little level, there's corruption everywhere. But it's not as alarming as the one in Africa. 
nobody can terrorize you here no even if especially if you're an immigrant and you are here legally nobody can just wake up and terrorize me just because i'm not a belgian you see these are the mm. different here then here in belgium i like them because the gap between the rich and the poor is very slim you don't you don't they have systems in place to make sure that some people are not getting more money more than others so i just feel like their system is more in place as compared to africa and yes as, in, as when it comes to infrastructure yeah infrastructure is good and all of that which i think is something that we should improve in africa there are systems you cannot just come and build anyhow you cannot just sell on the road you know things that we 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 suffer from in Africa and all of that. There's no corruption, there's no nepotism. Yes, we may say that there's racism and all of that, but then I came here with an open mind. I know what I want. If you want to be racist towards me, I just see you like somebody who doesn't have sense and I move on mm. and I'm going mm. and... Mm. I am somebody who, I haven't really experienced racism like that. Thank God I've met like wonderful people. I can't say much about racism. Yes, maybe if you enter the train as a black person, people will be staring at you so much. But then, what are, your eyes have nothing to do with me. I just the, first month, the first month they paid you, went to work, they paid you euros. Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> After seeing them, what did you say? I was proud. I'm like, hmm, you're working your money. I was proud of the money. <laughs> and I was happy. It was a good amount. <laughs> uh, it was a good amount, eh? Yeah, I was like, hmm, this is money. Let's talk about cost of living there. Working, uh, you pay your bills and all that. I mean, uh, the money that you make, school, job money, rent, <laughs> you still keep okay. some um you can keep some the truth is that if i and this boils down to lifestyle too if you're extravagant you're going to face problems if you are trying to live minimal you're just trying to be normal and all of that you mm. are to be okay normally like everywhere even if it's ghana or where you need to walk in order for you to survive if you come here and you don't want to walk you will not survive you find it difficult but if you walk you will be okay you may not be the richest person but you're just going to be okay you're going to have enough that you will not have to ask anybody money back home that's what i know if you come here and you walk you will not have to ask anybody any money and if you come here those first few months and you're doing like this eh, i'm not doing this one or i'm not doing this one you it's very difficult for us to just come and have good jobs it's very hard you need to come with him an open mind whether they're asking me to work in a restaurant i'll work whether they're asking me to go clean anywhere i'll clean and while you're doing it now and then you're looking for better prospects out there you may not it's very difficult especially as an african they don't even trust our experience and our systems back home so you need to come here and prove yourself so if you come and just say no I'm not doing that thing. I'm, I want to work by in one office. I want to work by in the European Union office. Okay, now. Have you met any uh, African in your school? Yeah, there are many Africans in. There are many, eh? From yeah. Ghana and Cameroon too, as well. From Ghana, Nigeria, anyway, Cameroon, yes. Anyway, from many French-speaking countries, you will see a lot of them, like Congo. Anyway, mm. Belgium was a colonial master of Congo, so you will see more Congolese people here. You will see, yeah, people from Cameroon because we speak French, but there are many Ghanaians. So, so you don't you don't miss home then because you see your people. I mean, no, you always miss home. There's no place like home. Never, never. So after school, are you looking back to go back home, as you are saying? I don't know yet if I want to go home or maybe go to another country because I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to stay in Belgium forever. So I can't say. As the spirit leads, maybe go maybe, to. Maybe we have, we have plans to come and invest or set up business in in in, in Ghana, your, your country, uh, in Cameroon. The, yeah, yeah, retirement. You have to go back home. Obviously, set up. Retirement. We talk about retirement, but not investing now after school. You That's go back and set up business. You need to invest so that you go back home and enjoy your retirement. So that okay. you go back and because here you cannot rest here. Here is, Ale, Manpower. Ale, is on the move. Yes, you cannot Manpower. rest. Yes, there's no rest here, so you need to go back. If you want to rest, go back home and rest. You cannot sit here and rest. Thank you so much, Flavin. Uh, what's the uh, social media handle and all that? Okay. Your channel and all that. My channel name is Flavin Tabella. 
and okay yeah. and other social media handles uh my social medias are same like this name so for my instagram is um at flavin underscore tabe my tiktok is still flavin tabe with small letters so it's still this name flavin tabe yeah. okay nice talking to me as on sbtv africa thank you so much uh flavin tabe thank you so much when i come to belgium i'll look for you okay i'll give you a personal tour <laughs> ah you give me a personal tour now yeah. you are belgian ambassador for uh cameroon Belgian ambassador <laughs> no no i'm an ambassador for international students i like to fight for the, on their behalf I, I hear i hear you thank you so much for talking to us on sbtv africa this daily also worldwide all you need is the internet my name is dj Nyami. if you enjoy my vibe make sure you tap on subscribe like share invite your friends to come and join us um, we have more videos on our channel. Just go to videos, you see more. So if you are watching, you are an African and you want to come on my show, my numbers are on the screen. Just send me a voice or a WhatsApp message. Flavin, thank you so much. I'll thank my production team. Tua, I'm out. Peace out. Pay well.